Healthy people depend on healthy soils and landscapes. Promoting more biodiversity in agriculture can help us address food insecurity, land degradation, and climate change. My name is Araya Amadou. I'm um, a Gambian citizen. You know, we look, we went, um, look for it in the past year in um, Libya. But like, before I left, you know, I was doing um, with, uh, business, you know, on very small scales, you know. I was building vegetables, you know, in a very small scale. So, like, I went every week. So, but, you know, later I have a problem, you know, bringing these vegetables. Because, like, the two governments, you know, Gambian governments, and Senegalese government, you know, especially our former president, the IGM, it have a problem with the Senegalese government. So, but later, you know, I couldn't have uh, a way to come. You know, so we decided to smuggle. So, but later, you know, I was caught. And I was caught. Um, I pay like $18,600. Second, I was caught again. You know, I pay $11,000. The third, you know, I was paid like $6,000. So I said to myself, you know, because I'm doing this business and I'm not seeing myself again in this business. So let me leave this country. You know, so I look, go and look for a given pastor because being the head of the family, you have so many accept, you know, uh, financial accept, which heading on my shoulders, you know, which I need to uh, fix. And you know, there was a problem, you know, I couldn't fix anything again. So I decided to leave this country to go and look for a given pastor. So I, you know, I traveled through five countries before I reached to um, Libya. But when I left, I reached to Libya, you know, I was caught, you know, by the Libyan um, and this later, you know, I managed to escape from their custody. And later, you know, I was caught, caught by the Libyan soldiers and I spent like two months, five days in the prison, you know, so they bring me back in the Gambia here. So what I want to say, like, there are more hopes, you know, the hopes we have, we, we um, youths, especially like youths, want to venture into agriculture, you know, there are more hopes, you know, when they have, to, you know, land to work, you know, and irrigation, you know, they have, to, there will be more hopes, you know, for them, definitely. It's not only like agriculture. There are so many like special in scales, you know. You know, when they venture into that, you know, there will be hope for them. Thank you very much. We just watched Out of Africa, an episode from the series Years of Living Dangerously, released in 2016. It still makes sense four years after its release to watch it again and reflect on migration and climate refugees on this desertification and drought day. My name is Caroline Galipo. I work with UNCCD, and today I have the pleasure and the honor to have a discussion with Mr. Thomas Friedman, the New York Times columnist you just followed through the episode, investigating whether a changing climate could also be one of the drivers of Europe's worst migration crisis since World War II. Thank you to be here. Great to be with you and your audience. Thank you for having me. So, Mr. Friedman, besides writing for the New York Times since 1981, you are a reporter and an internationally known author of seven best-selling books, the latest being Thank You for Being Late, an Optimist's Guide to Thriving in the Age of Acceleration. Well, um, this uh, trip I took to Africa um, uh, with, with the UN desertification program was hugely helpful uh, in writing my last book because uh, my book is really about three simultaneous accelerations all happening at the same time. That we're seeing a sec acceleration in technology, we're seeing an acceleration in globalization, and we're seeing an acceleration in climate change. And they all really converge to both drive and explain uh, the process of climate migration driven by desertification. So this trip um, was so important. I took it as part of a television series I was a reporter on called Years of Living Dangerously. And I can say it was one of the most impactful trips of my life. Um, so before being involved in the documentary, were you especially concerned about the connection between climate change and human migration? Yes, I'd written a book in 2008 um, called um, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, um, which was all about how the 
intersection between globalization, population growth, um, uh, and um, uh, technology was uh, was reshaping the world. And um, uh, this trip very much fed into and uh, was driven by themes I first explored in that book in 2008. Mm-hmm. So this year, the focus of this certification and drought day is on changing public attitudes to the leading driver of desertification and land degradation, which is humanity's relentless production and consumption, like you, you just mentioned. Um, in the series, in the episode, it is mentioned that those affected are not those responsible of the situation. So does that mean that those not directly affected are the ones who have the power to improve the situation and make a difference? Well, there's no question that's true. And one reason we did this documentary is that people say, well, I'm affected, people living in Europe, <coughs> by the migration crisis. Um, but they didn't connect uh, being swamped by migrants with their own uh, climate behaviors and abuses. And what we tried to do was draw the whole circle for them. One of the most powerful interviews we did was with the chief meteorologist in Senegal uh, at Dakar Airport. Um, and he explained to us that Senegal was already at two degrees rise average temperature since the Industrial Revolution. I said, two degrees rise average temperature. Where have I heard that number before? Oh, that's what um, the Paris Climate Agreement was designed to prevent by 2100. And Senegal was already there in 2016. And as the meteorologist explained to me, they're going to four degrees rise. And if we're already getting these huge desertification effects and migration effects at two degrees rise, imagine what happens at four. Mm -hmm. And so you're mentioning this this great um, um, meeting or encounter that you did with the meteorologist. Um, You met lots of people throughout the film, uh, this couple that is expecting a a baby. Do you recall another particularly memorable or impactful encounter that may or may not even be in the final cut? Well, what was so powerful, I think, uh, and it's in the film, uh, meeting refugees, climate migrants returning from Libya uh, who had tried to get across to Europe Uh, but could not. And in some cases, we met some who had actually been to Spain and come back. Um, But the the terrible, harsh conditions of trying to get out, uh, then having to come back, being separated from families, and many of them explained because Niger has such high fertility rate, they they had 12, 13 children depending on them. And so you come to appreciate the desperation for someone to leave their home, their, their village, Um, and try to migrate to this strange and foreign place called Europe. You have to be so desperate. And um, that's certainly what I appreciate. We had another scene with a tribal elder, the chief in a village, where all the young men were were gone. There was no one between ages 18 and 60, basically, because they had all gone to Europe. And the, the terrible sadness of losing their community. They may be poor, but what they had was community, family, connections, language, food, dress, music, holidays, to give all that up, to make this perilous trip to Europe, to be able to earn a few euros and send them back, shows you the the deep desperation that these people felt. Mm -hmm. And and still, um, we at the UNCCD, we we are really uh, trying to um, highlight the um, how the how much the Sahel region is a land of opportunities that can be developed uh, with a rich culture, uh, natural resources, minerals, wind, solar energy. Um, did you witness that? Did you did you feel that there was this this uh, uh, unlocked uh, opportunity maybe uh, that was there around? Well, we certainly saw you know parts of the Great Green Wall that um, uh, people were were trying to erect. And um, uh, I know that uh, the UN desertification program is now working on its uh, 3S program, you know, of uh, security, sustainability, um, and uh, what's the last S for? Stability. Stability, yeah. And you see all these really go together, you know. Um, We tend to want to separate them. Oh, we have a terrorism problem coming from Niger. 
well, let's send the French Foreign Legion, when maybe the terrorism overlaps with the instability, overlaps with the ins economic insecurity, overlaps with the climate unsustainable behaviors. And one has to see all of these as part of a single ecosystem. Um, even if you're sitting in Europe, you're all part of a single ecosystem. And that was what we tried to drive home to people, that if you looked at the map and Monique Barbu, who headed the desertification program then and who accompanied us on the trip, she had an amazing map that, that had a circle of where the, the, the worst uh, terrorism was happening uh, in uh, the Sahel, uh, where the uh, most unemployment was happening, and where the greatest climate degradation was happening, and all three circles were in the same spot. So if you don't take a holistic view of these problems and have a holistic solution, you have no solution at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now it's been for years already. Um, do you, well, first of all, do you have some updates on any of the stories that are uh, highlighted in, in the film or? Yeah, unfortunately I don't, I have not been back. I'd love to go back and, and see um, what has improved and, and sadly what probably has not improved um, to, to keep drawing a spotlight on this and, and, and to encourage people to have this ecological view of the world, not just in terms of ecology of green things, but that we are a single ecosystem. Uh, the world isn't just interconnected. It's not just interdependent, it's now fused. We are fused together in ways we've never been before. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next um, investigation or a documentary that you're doing in the area could be about the Trieste Initiative. Um, we were discussing bef uh, before that in Agadez, Niger, where you've been and when you've been filming, uh, it was uh, we had this uh, land restoration pilot project that was launched just afterwards. Um, so basically, we have this group of 30 uh, returnees uh, from Libya, ex-migrants, smugglers, youth at risk, and uh, this uh, pilot project um, uh, gives them one hectare of land to use for income generating activities. So basically, we're really, um, through this project, trying to empower the youth and, and give them a reason also to stay. Because uh, we were mentioning that uh, in the film also it's mentioned, the, the region of the Sahel holds the youngest population in the world. Uh, I, so this is, this is a very rich resource um, if we were able to, you know, uh, keep them and, and uh, enable them to develop the communities where they're from. Well, you know, I've learned that um, uh, the UN desertification program is a great host. So if you invite me uh, to join you, I promise I will come back with you. Good. I'd that is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Really um, <laughs> so, I mean, you, you are still very, very connected through your work to uh, the situation um, in, in, in this area of the world. Uh, do you feel uh, that we're making progress? Do, how do you foresee the, the, the future? Well, I, I think we're making progress, Kelly, but not fast enough. And so um, I always go back to what the great environmentalist Dana Meadows once said, we have exactly enough time starting now. We have exactly enough time starting now. So the optimist in me always says we still have time to make a meaningful impact, but the pessimist in me says we better start now because we, we have exactly enough time starting now. And is there a last, um, well, this was already a very good uh, <laughs> word. <laughs> I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, I mean, is there something that uh, I haven't asked a question about it, but there is something it's about good. it. Good, you, you, you uh, stimulated me to rethink about this. It was one of the best trips of my life, I'll tell you. One of the most interesting trips of my life. And seriously, um, when coronavirus is over, um, I would love to go back with you guys. I thank you for asking me to do this. I'm really glad I did it. I really um, uh, was indebted to Monique um, and all of you for your team for giving me this opportunity. And, and I really mean that. Let's do it again. You know, I'd really love to do that. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Friedman. And uh, I hope that uh, our audience um, enjoyed the documentary, that it will uh, encourage them to reflect. And uh, thank you for the discussion. Uh, please. 
stay tuned because uh, we have coming next a live concert by uh, Grammy Award winner Ricky Kej featuring his fellow UNCCD LAN ambassador Baba Mal from Senegal and also many other talented artists. So uh, the certification and job day is still ongoing and uh, we hope that you'll stay with us. Thank you again. <laughs>